In number theory, you learn that the positive integers can be put into three sets. The units, which only contains the number one, the prime numbers, and the composite numbers. Every composite number can be factored into a product of primes in a unique way. So you could say that prime numbers are the building blocks of the positive integers. Is there something similar in group theory? Can you factor groups into something like prime groups? For finite groups, you can, and we call the building blocks simple groups. One way to factor a group is with normal subgroups. As a reminder, if you have a group G, then a subgroup N is called a normal subgroup if G times N times G inverse equals N for every element G in the group. This is the textbook definition of a normal subgroup, but it hides their important features. The key thing about normal subgroups is that you can use N to split G into a bunch of cosets, and you can treat these cosets as elements in a group called a factor group. In this factor group, the subgroup N is the identity element. And to multiply two cosets G1N and G2N, you just multiply every element in the first coset by every element in the second coset. The result will be another one of the cosets. Every group G has at least two normal subgroups, the trivial group and the entire group G. But these normal subgroups are not very interesting. For the trivial subgroup, the factor group is just G. And for the group itself, the factor group is a trivial group. If these are the only two normal subgroups of G, then we call G a simple group. And simple groups are the building blocks of finite groups. Here's why. Suppose you have a finite group G. Pick a normal subgroup N1 of G that is both maximal and proper. By maximal, we mean there's no bigger normal subgroup in G that contains N1. And by proper, we mean it's a proper subgroup of G. That is, it's not equal to G. In other words, pick as big a normal subgroup of G as possible. Now continue this process by picking a group N2 that's a normal subgroup of N1 and is also maximal and proper. Continue this process until eventually you end up with the trivial group. The result is a chain of groups where each one is a normal subgroup of its parent. This is often called a normal series. In each step, we chose as large a normal subgroup as possible. That was a proper subset. So we have a chain that's as long as possible and has no duplicate groups. We call a normal chain that's as long as possible a composition series. The composition series of a group is similar to the prime factorization of an integer. And while it's possible to have more than one composition series for a finite group G, it turns out any two series are actually equivalent. They will have the same length, and the factor groups from the two series are isomorphic, though you may have to rearrange them. This milestone result is known as the Jordan-Holder theorem. In a composition series, each quotient group is a simple group. This means the task of cataloging all finite groups can be split into two problems. One, find all the simple groups. And two, find all the different ways you extend one group by a simple group. That is, given a finite group N and a simple group S, Find all groups G where N is a normal subgroup of G and their quotient is a simple group S. This is known as the extension problem and mathematicians are hard at work trying to solve it. However, the first job of finding all simple groups is finished. The result says that there are four sets of finite simple groups. The first set consists of the integers mod P where P is a prime number. Recall that if a finite group G has a subgroup H, then the order of H divides the order of G. The integers mod p have order p, and because p is prime, it has only two divisors, 1 and p. This means the only two subgroups are the trivial group and the entire group. Since there are no other subgroups, the integers mod p are simple groups. And because there are an infinite number of prime numbers, there are an infinite number of simple groups in this class. The second class of simple groups was found when searching for ways to solve polynomial equations. A famous result in mathematics says there's no general formula for solving equations of degree 5 or higher. To prove this, a connection was found between the field containing the solutions to an equation and a certain group called the Galois group. For there to be a general formula for a polynomial of degree n, the composition series of the symmetric group Sn needs to have abelian factors. But this fails when n is greater than or equal to 5. That's because in this case, Sn has a composition series with only three groups, the trivial group, An, and Sn, where An is the alternating group, the group of even permutations. For this composition series, the factor groups are the integers mod 2 
and an. When it was discovered that an is simple when n is greater than or equal to 5, the problem was solved because an is not an abelian group. In other words, there is no formula for solving polynomials of degree 5 or higher. So the second class of simple groups are the alternating groups an when n is greater than or equal to 5. There are an infinite number of simple alternating groups. By the way, while the first set of simple groups are all abelian groups, these simple groups are all non-abelian. The third set of simple groups ventures into more advanced territory, Lie groups. Loosely speaking, a Lie group is a group that's also a manifold. Recall that a manifold is a space which locally looks like regular n-dimensional space, but globally can look very different. For example, the complex numbers of absolute value 1 form a group under multiplication, and it's a circle, which is a one-dimensional manifold. If you zoom in on any point, its neighborhood appears to be a snippet of a straight line. A more unusual example of a Lie group is the group of real and invertible n by n matrices. These are the matrices where the determinants are all non-zero. This is a group, and if you unpack the entries in the matrix, they form a vector in n square dimensional space. Imagine taking n square dimensional space and carving out all the matrices with determinant zero. It's kind of hard to imagine, but what's left over is a manifold. Lie groups of matrices lie at the intersection of group theory, differential geometry, and linear algebra. This gives you a large toolbox of mathematical techniques you can use to study the groups. There's one problem, however. Like the circle, this Lie group is an infinite group. Mathematicians were looking for finite simple groups. One way around this problem was to look at matrices with entries from a finite field. Using a variety of techniques, mathematicians were able to uncover a vast collection of finite simple groups. These are called groups of Lie type because of the similarity to Lie groups. The fourth and final set of simple groups consists of 26 groups called the sporadic groups. The reason for their name is they do not fit neatly into any category. However, there is a star in this group, the monster group. The monster group is big, very big. Even describing this group is difficult to do, so we'll save that for another day. But the monster group contains 20 of the 26 sporadic groups as either subgroups or quotient groups. These 20 simple groups are known as the happy family, but there are six sporadic groups which are not relatives of this family. These remaining sporadic groups are called the pariahs. Mathematicians are now confident they have found all finite simple groups, but there's still work to be done. The proof is long, very long. The classification of finite simple groups was a team effort that required over 10,000 pages of difficult mathematics. Is there a simpler way to describe the simple groups? Are there undiscovered connections between them that would reveal shorter and more beautiful proof? Time will tell. Our dream at Socratica is for our number of subscribers to be the same size as the simple group A13, the alternating group on 13 elements. If this were to happen, we would be able to release a new video every hour. We're off to a good start, but there's still a long ways to go. So do us a solid and click that subscribe button.